Belief in Qadr, belief in divine decree. This liberates the Muslim mind so that when something comes to you and you did not want it to come to you, you remain happy. Or something that does not come to you but you wanted it to come to you, you remain happy because you believe in something called Qadr, divine decree. Today I would like to share with you a few thoughts to speak about Qadr. And I guarantee you, dear brother, dear sister, if you give me an attentive ear, you will walk away from this lecture with a tangible shift, a major change in the way that you approach any one of the problems that comes your way, be it marital, be it social, be it financial, be it spiritual. I would like to present you, dear brother, dear sister, with four gateways, four doors, imagine. And my request, my pitch today is that any problem you have, pass it through each one of those four doors. And what will be from the other side, you will find a problem that has diminished in size and life that you will enjoy. And you will be a happy Muslim. Gateway number one, to believe that Allah is absolutely just. Therefore, before you say, why me? Why not her? Was that fair? Why did Allah Almighty send that my way? I wanted this, they did it. How come they've got their hands on it, not me? This is not just somebody may say, Astaghfirullah. I say to you, Allah Almighty said, Inna Allah la yadlimu mithqala darrah. Allah Almighty does not do injustice to even the weight of an atom. Allah Almighty said, Wama rabbuka bi dhallamin lil abid. Your Lord does not do injustice to his servants. Allah Almighty, he said, Wala yadlimu rabbuka ahada. Your Lord does not do injustice to anyone. The absolute justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pass your problem through that door. Believing in this one gateway has a profound effect in removing so much sorrow from your life. In fact, the very dua, prayer, supplication of sorrow that we make when you are down, there is a reminder in it that Allah Almighty is just. Do you know the dua? Our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the dua of sorrow is as follows. Allahumma inni abduk. Oh Allah, I am your servant. Ibn Abdik, son of your servant. Ibn Amatik, son of your maid servant. Nasiyati biyadik, my forelock is in your hand. Maadin fiya hukmuk, your command over me will always be executed. Adlun fiya qada'uk, and your qadr, your decree over me is always just. Underline that. And then you say in your dua, أَسْأَلُكَ بِكُلْ لِسْمٍ هُوَ لَكْ I ask you by virtue of every name that you have. سَمَّيْتَ بِهِ نَفْسَكْ That you have given yourself. أَوْ أَنزَلْتَهُ فِي كِتَابِكْ Or a name you have taught us in your book. أَوْ عَلَّمْتَهُ أَحَدًا مِنْ خَلْقِكْ Or a name that you may have taught to one of your creation. أَوْ إِسْتَأْثَرْتَ بِهِ فِي عِلْمِ الْغَيْبِ عِنْدَكْ Or a name that you have kept secret to yourself. أن تجعل القرآن ربيع قلبي that you make the Quran the life of my heart ونور صدري and the light of my chest وجلاء حزني and the departure from my grief وذهاب هنمي and the release from my sorrow he said anybody who says this dua Allah will replace his grief with happiness the companions they said messenger of Allah should we memorize this he said every Muslim who hears these words should memorize it this is gateway number one do you remember it the gateway that says Allah is most just, therefore expect good of Him and don't doubt Him. There is justice in what has come your way. Gateway number two, belief that Allah Almighty's knowledge encompasses all things. It is essential if you want your belief in divine decree Qadr to be in place, to pass your problem through that second gateway as well. That Allah knows. Therefore, before you say, how come? Does Allah not see me? Can Allah not hear me? I remind you of this gate. Allah sees all and He hears all. There is no sky that obscures His vision from another sky. And there is no sound that obscures His hearing from another sound. What is private to you is public to Him. And what is hidden to you is revealed to Him. Allah Almighty, He said, Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. Does He not know that Allah can see? Allah Almighty said to Prophet Musa and Harun, Innani ma'akuma asma'u wa ara, I am with you both. I hear and I see. Allah Almighty, He said, Wa idh qulna laka inna rabbaka ahata bin nas. We said to you, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have encircled people completely. Allah has knowledge. And Allah Almighty said, Think about this ayah. 
وعندهم مفاتيح الغيب with Allah are the keys to the unseen لا يعلمها إلا هو no one has knowledge of them except Allah ويعلم ما في البر والبحر and he knows everything that is happening on the land and in the sea وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا And there is no leaf that falls off any tree except that Allah has full knowledge of it. وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ Nor even a grain somewhere within the darknesses of the earth. وَلَا رَطُبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ And nothing dry or moist except that it is with Allah written in a clear record. That is the knowledge of Allah. How can you say Allah does not see me? Or has Allah not heard my dua? How can you say, Allah, did you not see me? Allah, can you not hear me? Allah, don't you know what I'm going through? Pass your problem through the second gateway. That says Allah sees all. He hears you, He sees you, He's aware of your situation. Why does He do the things He does? We'll get to that in a moment. But for now, understand He knows. And that is why the scholars, they say something which is actually quite difficult to get your head around. Actually impossible. They say Allah has knowledge of what has happened in the past and what is happening at present and what shall happen in the future. Take note of number four. And he has knowledge of those things that shall never happen. If they were to happen, how they would happen. SubhanAllah. The infinite probabilities of circumstances that will never unfold. But if they were to unfold, Allah knows how they would unfold. And you say Allah does not know? Or you doubt whether he hears your dua? Gateway number two, Allah sees all and hears all. Gateway number three, to believe that Allah Almighty is absolutely wise in everything he does. That will allow your heart to rest. And the amount of doubt that we may have in our hearts will come flushing out if we understand this third gateway. And if you want a demonstration of this, a snippet preview of Allah's wisdom, I share with you a story that all of you are aware of. The story of the Prophet of Allah Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam. If you and I had access to the script of the story of Yusuf before the event unfolded, I can guarantee that most of us would choose to edit the script and change certain parts of it. I mean, you, you read in the script that this baby Yusuf is going to be thrown in a well. You'd say, why does that have to happen to a child? No, we'll change that. You see that his brothers will conspire against him to kill him. No, that he doesn't have to go through that. We'll change that. You see, then he will be sent to Egypt and sold as a slave and separated from the arms of his mothers and fathers. Why should any child have to go through that? We'll, we'll change that. You read in the story that he's going to grow up to be a very handsome man and then a woman will seduce him to do the act of immorality with her. You say, no, there's no need for that. We'll change that. And then you read that he's going to be thrown behind bars for some years. Why does he have to go through that? He's a prophet. He's got better things to do. We'll change that. But had Allah Almighty accepted those changes, would the story have panned out the way it did? And would the ending have been as perfect as it is today? The answer is no, to show you the wisdom of Allah. Allow me to demonstrate this. Rewind in the story of Yusuf. If Prophet Yusuf had not been the subject of conspiracy when his brothers wanted to kill him, Yusuf would not been have thrown inside of the well. If Yusuf was not thrown inside of the well, he would not have been picked up by the Egyptian businessman. If he was not picked up by the businessman who sent him to Egypt, he would not have been sold as a slave. If he had not been sold as a slave, it means that he would not have been seduced by the wife of the ruler. If he was not seduced by the wife of the ruler, he would not have been put inside prison. But if he was not put inside of prison, his ability to interpret dreams would not have been discovered. If his ability to interpret dreams was not discovered, he would not have met the ruler. If he had not met the ruler, he would not have been able to save the whole of Egypt that was going to experience a famine. If he was not able to do that, then it means he would not have been appointed as a treasurer. And had he not been appointed as a treasurer, he would not have been able to invite his mother and father and his brothers from Palestine and live with him in Egypt. And they lived happily ever after. Subhanallah al -Azim. Wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you doubt him? Everything that he sends your way is because it's what you need. Even though it may not be in line with what you want. But trust him and allow these doubts to disappear once and for all. This is gateway number three. Allah is the most wise in everything he does. And I here remember the story of a king and a minister. And the minister was, mashallah, like yourselves, a practicing person. And this minister had a statement that he would always repeat, which is, 
Goodness is what Allah chooses. There is good in everything Allah chooses. And so one day he was eating with the king as usual. And the king, as he was cutting into his food, he passed the knife over his finger and he wounded himself and he started to bleed. And so the minister said to him, hey, hey, don't worry. Goodness is what Allah chooses. Be happy. So the king was like, are, are you gloating at my misery? It's like you're happy because of what happened to me. So the king said, your place will be the cell. And he sent him to prison. And as he was being taken away behind bars, the minister said, goodness is in what Allah chooses. The king had a habit of going out to hunt every evening. And he would go with his minister usually. But now the minister is not there. So he went by himself and he was chasing a particular animal during his hunting exercise. And he was running so fast that he did not realize that he had just crossed the boundaries of his kingdom. And he'd entered now the sanctuary of idol worshiping communities. So they caught him, they arrested him, they fettered him in chains, they took him to one of their biggest idols, they lowered him onto the ground, they placed a knife to his neck, they were on the verge of slaughtering him for their idol, and then they saw that his finger was damaged. So they said, this is not suitable as a sacrifice for our God. So they removed the chains and they, and they set him free. So he realized that, yeah, it's true, goodness is in everything Allah chooses. So he went back to the palace and he freed the minister and he hugged him and apologized and he said to him, I understand, you are right. Goodness is in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses. You are right, forgive me. But I have one question to ask you, O oh minister. I understand the wisdom behind the wound in my finger now, but I don't understand the wisdom in you being sent to the prison. And when you were making your way there, you said goodness is in everything that Allah chooses. What is the good in that? And then the minister said to him, Your Highness, who is it that usually goes out hunting with you? He said, you. He said, so when they discovered that your finger was cut, who would they have sacrificed in your place? He said, yourself. He said, therefore, goodness is in everything that Allah Almighty chooses. Allah knows. And man does not know. This is gateway number three. Rest assured, allow your heart to rest. Allah knows, and Allah is wise. Gateway number four, and I will conclude with this. Allah does whatever He wants. I know a lot of people don't like to talk about this. Maybe it's not politically correct, but it is a reality when understanding qadr and things that Allah sends your way, or to the Muslim ummah at large. Allah does what He wants. Whose kingdom is it? It's His kingdom. The earth that you're walking on, it's His earth. The air that you are breathing, it's his air. The body that you are borrowing, that's his. He does what he wants. Who are you? Who am I? Petty creatures to challenge Allah Almighty's wisdom and to say, how come? Why me? Allah says, I do what I want. It's my kingdom. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said in the Quran, speaking about Maryam, Mary, she said, my Lord, how can I have a baby when no human being has ever touched me? What was the response from Allah? He said to her, thus it will be Allah Almighty creates whatever he wants. Allah Almighty said in another ayah, وَمَن يُهِنِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِن مُكْرِمٍ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَفْعَلُ مَا يَشَاءُ Whoever Allah humiliates, no one can honor. Allah does whatever He wants. Allah Almighty said in ayah number three, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا قَتَّتَلُوا وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَفْعَلُ مَا يُرِيدُ If Allah wished, they would have never fighted one another, but Allah does whatever He wants. In ayah number four, Allah Almighty said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدْخِلُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جَنَّاتِ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَفْعَلُ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah Almighty will allow the believers who do good deeds to enter gardens beneath which rivers flow. Indeed, Allah does whatever He wants. Never forget that. You say, how, how come I'm still poverty ridden? I'm still a poor man, broke. Yet all of my friends are doing better than me. They haven't got half the skill set that I have. I say to you, it's Allah's kingdom. He does what He wants. He hasn't given you permission to be rich yet. Allah does whatever He wants. So therefore, allow your heart to settle. Be pleased, brothers and sisters. These are four gateways that I would wanted to share with you. Remember them. The justice of Allah, the knowledge of Allah, the wisdom of Allah, and Allah does whatever He wants. Four gateways. Whenever you have an issue, be it Islamic or otherwise, pass your problems through these gates. And watch how our hearts will rest with Allah's decision. He knows. And that is why there is a beautiful ayah in the Quran that summarizes everything we said. 
Surah 64, Allah said, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Any calamity that befalls you, he said, realize it is by the permission of Allah. And then he said, وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ But whoever believes in Allah, Allah will guide his heart. Allahu Akbar. Do you feel the medicine? There is another recitation of this ayah, the recitation of Al-Krimah that reads as follows. وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدَ قَلْبَهِ Whoever believes in Allah, his heart will rest. Al-Qama, he said, explaining this ayah, this verse is in reference to a person who is afflicted with a trial, but then he realizes that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so his heart surrenders to Allah and his heart relaxes. Ya Salam, Allahu Akbar. Realize that the, the sea that baby Musa was thrown in, despite him being a child at the time, it didn't harm him. Yet it was the very same sea that would destroy the Pharaoh when he was inside and he was at his strongest. Which shows you that when you are close to Allah, your weakness will not harm you. And when you are distant from Allah Almighty, your strength will not benefit you. Remember these gateways, it will take time to simmer, it will take time to digest, it will take time to practice the use of these gateways. Take note of them and pass every one of your trials through them and the outcome will be a Muslim man, a Muslim woman who lives happily on dunya, happily in their grave and happily on the day of judgment when Allah takes them by the hand via the angels and sends them to the place in Jannah.